Well, hello and welcome back to the third and final part of Elena's bad ending in Everlasting Summer. This is going to be what happened after Semyon returned back to the real world and it's not nice. I will warn you now, if you are bothered by things like suicide, mental illness, such things, I would recommend you don't watch this in all honesty and move on to the next episode, which is going to be Lena's happy ending. But if you're still with me, enjoy. I regain consciousness at the bus stop. So, running away, scumbag? I muttered darkly to myself. I couldn't stand to stay a single minute longer in this camp. Lena will never come back. I can't justify what I've done. I'll just wait for the bus that will take me away from here. I didn't have the slightest damn about what was going to happen to me tomorrow or in an hour. I don't care about answers. I don't care about how I got here. Soon enough, I saw a glimmer of this dim light in the distance. Somehow, I wasn't surprised at all. In a minute, I was sitting in an empty number 10 bus and was looking into the dark of the night through a weather-beaten window. My mind was blank. Everything that makes us human, feelings, emotions, aspirations, suffering, I left it all back there in that pioneer camp. Now all I have is this night and the empty bus. There is no future, no more present. If I died tomorrow, that would only mean that yet another human body had ceased to exist. The real me died there a few hours ago. I don't know how much time passed, but fatigue overtook me. I wasn't going to fight it, as it made absolutely no difference whether I am sleeping or awake. I could barely hold my eyes open, and soon enough, I passed out. There are moments when reality becomes unimportant, insignificant, unworthy of attention. There are moments when your spiritual torment overshadows everything else, and even if the world ended, you would not notice. If a knife were to pierce you, you would not notice. Even if boiling for eternity in the cauldrons of hell would seem like just a minor inconvenience. After all, there are problems more important than that. When I opened my eyes, I realized that something is wrong. It took a while for clarity of thought to return. I finally realized that I'm not on a bus, but in my old apartment. Well, that was to be expected. As if I'd spent the whole week preparing for an exam and at the last minute I had spectacularly failed, and the result of this failure was returned to the real world. However, now it didn't seem any more real to me than Sovnyanok Pioneer Camp. No wonder, reality is what you hear, feel, touch and taste. And all that was really there. That world was real to the smallest detail. Sometimes it seemed more like it was my past life that was a fiction. And now I have to remember how to exist here. Though, why? I felt like a man who'd been thrown out of the car at full speed without even noticing it, and was left lying on the roadside with broken arms and legs while the car disappeared into the night, taking with it the last traces of hope. Lena. Her image surfaced in my fevered brain so clearly that I wanted to cry unbearably. No, I wanted to shout, tearing out clumps of hair, smashing my fists on the wall while making inhuman screams. However, my soul was empty. I tried in vain to find at least echoes of pain, guilt or pity for her, but nothing came. I was just lying there staring at the ceiling. I was not at all interested in how and why I came back. After all, who cares about the process of selling your soul to the devil, all the legal formalities of the contract, signatures, stamps and seals? 
What is more important is the result. And this is the result I got. No. It's not that I was sent back to reality. If I had gotten to the destination on that bus, it would hardly have changed anything for me. In this case, the result is what happened to Lena. And the reason is my actions. I was absolutely sure about that. After all, she could not just do that for no reason. No, Lena is not like that. So it's all my fault. It's hard to live knowing that you are the reason for someone else's death. As if I personally held the knife, calmly and carefully slit open her wrists and watched her die. And then just ran away. Of course, I couldn't do anything in that situation, but I still felt like I behaved like a coward. No, even worse. No, it doesn't. Does it really matter what the best definition of my actions is? I curse myself for remaining so calm while thinking about this situation. After all, I should be mourning Lena and blaming myself. But now, nothing is up to me. If I was not able to back then, I started shivering. My body was trembling and it was getting hard to breathe. Self-preservation instincts overtook my guilt for a while and I staggered to the kitchen to drink a sedative. They can always be found in the carpet of any antisocial person like me. Once I'd taken half of the tablets that were in the packet, I returned to the room and turned on the computer. Remaining in silence was unbearable. I played the first random song and realised it was probably the most depressing piece of music I had on my hard drive. However, I didn't want to turn it off. The background noise helped dampen my thoughts. I had to decide what to do with my life next. I was sure of what one thing, everything that happened in the camp, my appearance in it, my unexpected return, I didn't care about any of it. And not just that, I didn't care about the context of the reasons for those events either. The only thing that mattered was Lena. I horribly stumbled over the word was. Indeed. She's gone. Of course, it's possible that it was just a dream and she'd never existed in the first place. But then, our real world could just be someone else's raving delusion as well. Why not? If people suffer from losing their loved ones here, why should I think of Lena's death there as the result of my sick imagination? I saw it with my own eyes. I felt the shock, fear and fright. Damn it! For me, it's not that this was reality. It still is reality. Is and will be. And I'm sure I'm not daydreaming. Though it would be better if I dreamt that. The dreadful howl of guitars boomed from the speakers. It sounded like a requiem. A requiem for me. And now I have to live with this sense of guilt. No, I won't take it. My mind wasn't exactly a paragon of stability, but... Not even a man with a stable mind could understand shocks like this. And already, I already feel like I'm going mad. I tried to suppress all these thoughts. No. Not to forget, just to give myself some rest, just for a minute. But it didn't work. Pain racked my body again and again. I was already starting to feel it physically. However, the physical pain is weaker than mental. I fell to the floor, clasped my knees and began rocking back and forth in a fetal position. Blood pounded in my head so heavily that it felt like my skull could shatter at any moment now. I hit a table leg and a little candle rolled out from under a pile of papers. A little one, 20 centimetres long. It was bent to at an almost 90 degree angle but still retained its shape. The wick protruded from one end. I searched for a lighter and lit up the candle. Let it be the memory of Lena. Maybe in another world she is feeling better than... sat on the floor and watched as the wax slowly dripped onto my fingers. I felt no pain at all. Probably my nervous system was so exhausted that it was unable to transmit the pain impulses to my brain. The fire calmed me a little. I just watched the flame and did not think about anything. Finally, at least some peace of mind.
candle was halfway done. Suddenly I managed that my life is this very candle. Not just mine, any person's life. All that we have been given from above is its full length. But anything can happen. The wind may blow, the holding hand may tremble, or the wick may burn out. And a life will end before it should have. But after all, each candle is different. Such as this one, nine cents, one twice as thick, twenty, and huge ones as thick as the handle of a shovel, 185. I wonder, did Lena's candle burn out ahead of its time, or was it just smaller than the other ones? Though I doubt there could be one smaller than mine. I rotated the candle in my hands. How interesting is that? I can blow out the flame any moment and that's it. But in the meantime, life is not wax. You can't combine two small candles to make one of medium size. I would love to give the remains of mine to Lena, to anyone who needs it more than I do. But why would I need it? I do not feel pain from the heated wax. Its flame does not give me any warmth. It hardly illuminates the room. To put it bluntly, a waste of ropes, wax and oxygen. blew out the candle. The action evoked absolutely no response emotions in me. I slowly stood up and headed to the bathroom. Oh dear. Cut down the road, not across the street. Everyone else cuts across but you're going right down the... The image of Lena appeared before my eyes. She was smiling. We'll definitely meet again. I'm so sorry. Warm water, shadows and dying dreams have finally brought me some peace. It really might be that I never actually went to that camp, or that it, I never actually came back. But does it really matter now? Almost physically, I felt Lena's embrace. Everything will be all right. We'll catch the bus together and we'll ride it to the place where nobody will find us, where we'll be happy together. My strength left me and I started to sink into the water that was already spilling over the edge of the tub. We will surely meet. Forgive me. Well, it's not that surprising we got the bad end there. I don't know why. I thought I followed everything for the good end, but obviously I missed something. I should have to look into it and do the good one next time. Every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its own outline, synopsis, contents, key points, a prologue and an epilogue. There is no book which, if you read it again, would not reveal new details that you didn't notice before. Every story has its beginning and its end. Almost every. Oh man! Wow! I think I know what went, went wrong. After the card game when we went to the uh, the football field, I was expecting something to happen there, but nothing happened. I'm fairly certain that that was the problem. Oh, I think I need to lie down. I don't know about anything else. <laughs> 